what's up guys welcome back to another episode of the boyos discuss the podcast where we pick a topic and then shoot the shit about it for a while today we're doing our april fool special where we'll be reviewing the master of disguise i'm matthew and i'm joined by my co-host harlan howdy guys and ben yo so right off the bat, we'll kind of go through some facts about this movie before we get into the synopsis. Um, it was written by Dana Carvey, which, you know, that's just a shameless thing of like, oh yeah, it's like you're writing basically a role for yourself. But um, it came out in 2002. It had a budget of $16 million and made around $43.4 million at the box office, which I was surprised it made money at all, honestly, but... Uh, from there, um, on Rotten Tomatoes, it has a 1% score, and is <laughs> it's ranked as the 18th worst movie of the 2000s, so... Jeez. And, uh... It's not that bad. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's like, I don't disagree, like, uh, well, I mean, we'll get into that, but, um... Uh, Bo Derrick, who is the, I guess, cameo at the beginning was uh she was nominated for the golden raspberry award for worst supporting actress but she lost to madonna for die another day so it's like that's <laughs> good <laughs> that's a uh you know another madonna, shit. madonna earned that oh yeah <laughs> um <laughs> but then uh you know a couple other bits of trivia before we get into it um dana carvey decided he wanted to make this movie for his kids because he thought a lot of the stuff he made was like more adult oriented and he wanting he wanted something that was like family friendly i guess um which is weird when you consider i don't know some of the guess guess he makes a lot of ass jokes with his kids yeah <laughs> <laughs> there's a lot of like uncomfortable humor like that but um you see your mother's fat ass children mm. Ooh, it's, it's in the movie comfortable <laughs> with uh, um well and then to date this is like between this and jack and jill from 2011 this was like the last leading role that uh dana carvey had in a movie because like i don't know if it's just like an snl actor thing where they do like i don't know two shit movies in a row and then it just kind of kills their career like you have uh um fucking uh mike myers where he did the love guru and cat in the hat like back to back <laughs> and that basically ruined his career and then you had um eddie murphy who did norbit and uh what was the other one he did he did like a thousand good deeds of something and is he the whole That's thing was actors in general i but like i don't know snl actors like they get two duds and that's it whereas you have like I don't know other famous actors who do. I think it's uh, I think it's easier to have two dud comedies in a row than two dud dramas. So dramatic actors don't usually have to do that. But like, if the, if people are funny and on their game, it's like great, keep making movies. And if they lose it for two movies in a row, it's like okay, you're done. You're not funny. Get out of the way. Yeah. yeah. Uh, <laughs> we got all these new SNL actors. Dude. Yeah. Fuck off. Yeah. Um. But yeah. So that was like the last big thing he did was Jack and Jill, which I also think was a Happy Madison movie. Um, yeah. uh, cause yeah, it says Adam Sandler produced it, but, um, and played Jack and Jill. Oh, uh, that's neither here nor there. <laughs> 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 um, another interesting thing to note is that, uh, Jim Carrey was actually considered for the role of Pistachio Disguise, which I think that would have been a, an interesting choice. I think that would have, I don't it know. It was just Ace Ventura. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I Dude, guess that sounds that that sounds better. I would have liked that. Yeah, like, Anna Carvey's <laughs> fine, but like Jim Carrey would have been. Funny. Oh man, I feel like Jim Carrey has like the wackiness that could have carried this movie, kind of like the uh the Sonic the Hedgehog movie almost, where it's like that movie is sort of saved by <laughs> yeah him just and I being. Wouldn't... I wouldn't call Jim Carrey autistic in Ace Ventura, <laughs> but I'd call Dana Carvey autistic in fucking Master of Disguise. Oh, man. Like, I bet yeah. if Jim Carrey did it, he wouldn't have been as, like, just wrong, like, on the <laughs> spectrum. <laughs> oh, my God. I guess no, he's straight up, like, out there. I don't know. I mean, but. yeah, we'll, we'll we'll get to that. We have one more bit of, I guess, trivia. It's more like just a fact about the movie. Um, the director, this was his directorial debut. It was uh, Perry Andalyn Blake, who was a production designer for Happy Madison. And uh, this is the only thing to date 
that he has directed besides like he tried doing a tv show pilot in 2014 but it was apparently so bad that no one picked it up so it's like oof that's Jeez. not a very good uh hey did he make money or did he make money I mean, I mean that's he, a pretty good, yeah, pretty successful run. I'd, I'd say uh, more than doubled it. Come on, uh, I guess. Work. Well, and like I think it made money like at uh, like DVD and VHS sales. But um, uh, aside from that, like I guess with all that out of the way, what are y'all's experiences with the movie before we go into the synopsis? So I had seen this movie on repeat when I was a kid. This one was like, we got this from Dollar General. <laughs> and like, I remember it actually pretty vividly. I was pretty excited about it. And then we got home and that, that scene where he's like, become another person, become another person. And then he t- like, he's the um, Indian. Like, I remember that so vividly when I first saw it. Oh my God. But I actually kind of really liked it watched it a lot i thought it was pretty funny <laughs> <laughs> how about you ben any memories uh, my parents brought the vhs home and we watched it as a family and i would like shit myself with laughter <laughs> like every time brett spiner would fart I, I i thought like i was like what could be funnier there's this yeah. deep, <laughs> my comedy has reached the, the limit and uh, i was quoting it nonstop all through elementary school like the fucking turtle, Jesus Christ. Everybody was. The fucking turtle <laughs> club and everything. And then I just remember a lot that, like, I thought that was one of the funniest movies I'd seen. And I look at my parents and I'm like, that was great! And they're both just like, ugh. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, what? <laughs> that movie was funny as shit! <laughs> so, yeah, rewatching it was interesting. <laughs> For me, um, I'm kind of like Harlan, where we had gotten it i don't know why because like i don't think we saw it in theater but um we got it on dvd and that was one of the movies that we would just take with us on like road trips um because we had like a portable dvd player in the car that we would take um so that was one of the ones that and like uh napoleon dynamite um i think eventually nacho libre and bench warmers those were (laughs) ones that we like would play like pretty much on loop if we were going on like a long drive trip but um because of that like a lot of these uh i don't know if you want to call them like so bad that they're good quotes throughout the movie uh (laughs) we just like we quote that with each other like to this day and it's like it's again it's not even that it's like a good movie or that the jokes necessarily land it's just more so that like we just have watched it so many damn times that we just know it by heart. But um, before we go into the synopsis, what were y'all's, like, I guess, initial thoughts going into it, watching it this time? Uh, uh, okay, not... so... Go ahead. Okay. okay. Uh, I was not looking forward to it at all. <laughs> I was <laughs> like, all right, we'll be drinking, and I'll watch it with my friends, so I'll fucking watch it. Uh, but I was not excited. I was like, okay, we'll do it for the a- April Fool's. That's fitting. You just made me watch Snyder Cut, so I'm like, I need some good movies. So I wasn't happy about it. But, uh, you know, it was a good time. Yeah, well, like, I don't think <laughs> it's, it. I don't think it deserves a 1%. Like, no. I, it's like a, a 10. <laughs> you know, it's like, that's, it's, uh, that's where I'd probably put it. But it, how about, like, yeah, no, we'll talk about it at the end. Yeah. Yeah. 10 out of 10? Matthew. No, I said a 10% on Rotten Tomatoes. No, don't get that twisted. How about you? What did What did you think, Harlan? So actually going into it, I actually kind of had the same um, general mindset that Ben did because I, I remember watching it with Ben at his house, at his parents' house a while ago. Yeah. And it, it was way, way worse. Yeah, we turned viewing. it off. Yeah, we <laughs> stopped watching it. And, like, that's what I thought I was going to get going into this, but I was sober watching this movie, uh, and I still kind of enjoyed it. Like, it, uh, I, I was super surprised. So, yeah, we'll go into it. Yeah. So, Matthew, what are you thinking? What were your initial thoughts? I mean, I, you know, I, I it's not a horrible movie. That's, like, kind of my thoughts going into it. I was like, I'll probably, you know, I, I was mostly just shocked that, y'all laughed at some of the jokes along the way because like 
The worst thing is when you watch a comedy and none of the jokes land at all. And, like, it's just, like, dead silent. silent. Yeah, it's just silent. It's like, heh. You know, it's like... like fart jokes. Yeah. Well, and it's, it's like, you know, those ones didn't land. But, like, there was other stuff along the way that, uh, like, Ben, there was one part where you, like, we'll get to that. You fucking, like, deep laughed. And I was like... <laughs> I was like, what? There's, there's, <laughs> I was not expecting that. There's such but... a thing as it's, like, so fucking awful that it's hilarious. Yeah. And I think that, like, some movies don't do that. Some are just fucking awful and boring and shit. Like, this hit a really niche kind of, like, funny because it's so unbelievably bad. You're just like, how, what? Who put, who greenlit this? <laughs> and that just makes it funny. Uh but I mean, it's a kids' movie. Like the jokes weren't. Uh, there could be way worse. I don't yeah. know. I, let's. I, I feel like we should get this pretty clear. This is a Happy Madison movie. Yeah, um, yeah. This is this is not <laughs> really a kids' movie. <laughs> it like rides wow. the line like perfectly of being like, okay, technically it's a kids' movie. Technically. Yeah. Um. Yeah. I guess we'll we'll get into the synopsis then. We open with that like picture book matching thing where it's like different portions of the uh of the pictures you know and it's playing that pop song from the 2000s um and i thought then... that was the coolest thing ever <laughs> <laughs> i i would i remember like this is what directly makes me remember the dollar store because um the same day that we got the master of disguise they had like a book that was kind of similar to that but not really and then um and the movie it had that and it just absolutely blew my fucking mind <laughs> i thought it was it's so cool yeah yeah like that and then the pop-up book was also super cool i don't know i thought the books were, and props in this movie were pretty on point yeah uh from there though we get like a text exposition thing that's like them trying to build the universe i guess and they're talking about how this family has used disguises to protect the world from evil throughout like their entire history and this is their story <laughs> and so we start off in uh palermo italy in 1979 and we see bo derrick who has foiled devlin bowman's plan to do something it's never really explicitly said at this point uh, nor do i think they ever really talk about it later on but um she fights off his like little guards that he has and then she like lifts up her skirt thing and reveals her butt uh not her bare butt mind you but <laughs> her butt with underwear <laughs> and so um and then she does this like weird thing where she like flies away um with her dress like a flying squirrel yeah it's it's really bizarre and they never address it <laughs> again but um yeah so as she escapes um you know she gets into a car and she pulls off this mask and it turns out it's a fucking italian guy like this old italian guy and his name is um fabrizio disguise and he vows that his son will never partake in his destiny to be a uh i guess a disguise who's gonna protect the world from evil so it's a too dangerous <laughs> um from there though we switch over to the present day and now fabrizio owns an italian restaurant where his son and his wife work his son pistachio which oof that's <laughs> that's not a very good name it's seriously like... <laughs> i mean like that's the best Italian. you got fabrizio right yeah <laughs> like, ah that's funny <laughs> He's uh he's in the bathroom and he's wearing <laughs> underwear on his head and he has like a shaving cream beard and he's doing this like <laughs> Sorry, It's all good. Yeah, he's got like this uh this fucking shaving cream beard thing going on and I guess he's doing like a Moses impersonation sort of thing cuz he's got like a a uh hockey stick as his like staff. That's I what I got, yeah. Yeah, so he he's doing this impression and his dad walks in and he's like, "What the fuck are you doing, son? Like, why every time I come in here, you're doing this shit?" <laughs> and uh he tells him that there's this lady who's here to see him. And he he gets all excited and he does like the uh the Italian double kiss thing and gets a bunch of uh shaving cream on his dad's face. From there, we go to um like basically uh well i mean it's like a montage of his past 
where he like he's been into doing impressions of people his whole life he you know mocked his teacher in school and then he <laughs> wore like a uh, like a buff bodybuilder suit and fucking uh, in a gym and got thrown into the wall but uh he goes out and he meets up with this lady uh and we have this line it's um Naturally, Pistachio wanted to find a girl just like his mama, and it zooms in on his mother's ass. Yeah. <laughs> and it's ass not like a... Well, okay, this woman <laughs> is fairly rotund. And uh, are, I, there's like two raccoons fighting in a trash bag. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> She's a thick, thick ass boy. <laughs> <laughs> But, uh, yeah, from there, um, he goes down to meet the lady, and, uh, her name is Sophia. They had met up at, like, a bar the previous night, and he had done some impressions to kind of make her laugh and stuff, because he wanted to get laid, I guess, but, um, she, like, I guess decided to show up at his place of work to turn him down, which, I don't know if that's, like, a hoe move, or, like, I don't know what, what the deal with oh, that she's was. A, she's a total hoe. Yeah, well, so she shows up and is like, I she got a boyfriend. Yeah, she's yeah. like, I got a boyfriend, pistachios. And then she walks off and her ass is fucking huge. And it knocks over the sign, like the uh, the menu sign that they had in front of the restaurant. Um, and it's not just like an actress with a big butt. It's like it's a prosthetic, they like for the sure. Fuck yeah, out of her pants. Oh, oh yeah, God. like it's it's insane. But Talk um, about hourglass figure, am I right? Oh my, uh, like a, <laughs> she's, a, she's like a Kardashian. Yeah, basically. Yeah, <laughs> like a, a, an exaggerated version of one. Oh no, no, I think it's it's pretty much. Yeah. <laughs> if this had been made be. in like twenty. 16 it would have been fucking kim kardashian when that movie came out it was exaggerated now it's not yeah (laughs) (laughs) um after that though you know uh she knocks over the sign and then there's this kid who's going around on a skateboard um and he trips over the sign and uh for some reason pistachio introduces himself to this kid and his name is barney baker and he's like there's some random guy who's just like, hey, you should do one of your fucking impressions to cheer him up. And he does this, like, horrifying Shrek impression. Okay. Uh, I want you to mention the fact that Barney Baker has one line, basically. And he says it over <laughs> He's and got, over like, and over okay, yeah. I know I'm he fine. has other lines, but I don't care. <laughs> the only line he says is, I'm okay, I'm okay. And I hate him. Oh, yeah. I absolutely hate it, and I hate him. Every time he enters a scene or exit it, e- exits it. I'm okay. I'm well, okay. That's because he, like, fucking wipes him. out and face scrapes on the pavement every time. Maybe he, he should have just died. <laughs> 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 Fucking oh hit his God. head on the curve a little too hard. What if the movie took a turn he's like, like, I'm not, okay, I'm not, I'm okay. I'm not okay. I'm not okay. Your he's Shrek impression bleeding. isn't helping. Yeah, his brain's <laughs> coming out of his helmet. Like, is that what you want? <laughs> exactly that's exactly <laughs> what i want uh, well uh you know pistachio he does his shrek impression Which and I uh like it's, a, it's a mike myers thing so dana Carter yeah yeah so it, well, it's funny because they did um fucking wayne's world together but uh barney is like not at all impressed by it he just has like the most deadpan face and we've kind of done a thing in each movie where we're like okay this is the scene that defines the movie and uh, the kid's reaction <laughs> to Dana Carvey's uh, Shrek impression, that's kind of that's kind of like but how... It's, it... no, it's my reaction to his non-reaction of a terrible joke that makes it funny. It's like a perfectly brewed, unfunny cocktail. And you're just like, wow. <laughs> <laughs> like, wow the movie knows it's awful. not funny. That's pretty funny. <laughs> 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 Well, uh, he ends up liking, uh, cause Pistachio has, like, a little dog, it's like a schnauzer or something, um, and its name is The Cuteness, and, uh, <laughs> and so, um, you know, he likes the dog, and Barney's dad isn't in the picture, so Pistachio is like, hey, you can hang out with my dog whenever you want, uh, and that makes the kid happy, obviously, um, from there, though, we go back into the restaurant, and, uh, Pistachio is a waiter there, and he's acting really goofy. He's carrying all these plates without a tray. He's got like six. He's got three in each hand. And the other waiter, uh, Rex, is like, 
what are you doing that for? Like, you need to use a tray, you dingus. And then uh, Pistachio's like, nah, you're a fucking bitch, dude. And then Rex trips him, and he drops all this spaghetti all over these customers, and uh, then he's just... a fucking bold move to trip the owner's son with six plates of food. Yeah, yeah, exactly, yeah. God damn, Rex I know, seriously? (laughs) (laughs) I wouldn't do that. I wouldn't do that to Christian. Yeah. I can understand. I can understand tripping the owner's son. Whatever. Who gives a fuck? I would trip Christian all the time. <laughs> when he's not holding the, six plates. Yeah, not with the food in his hand. Are you kidding me? Yeah. Yeah, that's so much wasted food. And the and way that running. the way that Pistachio reacts when he falls on those people, he just starts like picking the like spaghetti falls all over these people right and he's just like playing with it and trying to feed it to them <laughs> off their yeah. heads and he like oh, gets the God. cheese I grater mean, and mean. he gets the cheese grater and he's like scraping parmesan cheese onto their heads and he's like there you go that's the good cheese yeah. and then his dad shows up and he fucking gives him like the death stare uh and then he just fucks off and uh then he goes to like these uh i guess texans who are there and he's taking their order. Nasty Texans. <laughs> <laughs> and we got this like big fat Texas guy with like a, a cowboy hat on. And he's like, just remember to give me some man sized meatballs. <laughs> <laughs> and then Pistachio goes into like a fucking catatonic state and is like hallucinating or something and everything well yeah and he he starts yeah he starts mocking him uh and he's like some man-sized meatballs man-sized meatballs (laughs) and uh and the guy's wife is like are you mocking my husband and uh pistachio is just he's mocking the both of them and uh he's mimicking them He's he's fucking autistic come on like you gotta give a little leeway to that like if i was standing taken care of like you know sometimes those people pack your bags at kroger and you're just nice to be like yeah cool man like good job but they how also gonna, how are you gonna be that rude to somebody who's clearly <laughs> clearly got a little bit of a deficiency all i'm saying is if you were <laughs> if you were like a hundred pounds heavier and wearing a cowboy hat you'd probably do that but um yeah he probably thinks that pistachio well, if i was a like fucking tool with... yeah maybe <laughs> he probably <laughs> thinks pistachio should have been dead like yeah oh. If I had some like that, I would have held his head in the bath to too long. Jesus so, Christ. Like, Jesus. <laughs> would have oh thrown God. him over the wall. Yeah. Oh <laughs> Send him back to Mexico. Jesus Christ. <laughs> but, uh, you know, he, he does that whole thing. And then, uh, you know, they're basically like, uh, they're about to, like, fight. And um, then Fabrizio shows up and he's like, what do you say to Amaya son? Like, get out of here, you know, basically. Um, because he's like, hey, your son's a freak. Da-da-da. But um, you know, they send him they send the Texans on their way, and uh they have this like weird thing where Pistachio is like, Oh, like the voices in my head are getting worse. <laughs> and then his dad is like, You're pistachio disguisey, like that's it, fucking don't worry about any of the other ones he did he's like yeah that's one of the voices um and then he says this like really weird line which i don't know if it's like a reference to a song he says papa don't preach i'm in trouble deep and i'm keeping my baby and then the scene just ends yeah i don't i didn't get that yeah i i it's probably like a song or something but um it just ends and then we go from there to uh like pistachio the shift is over he's out in an alley for some reason like he's walking around and uh he sees uh fucking sophia with rex who was the waiter who had tripped him and they're making out in the alleyway for some reason which that's a whole other can of worms but um you know they're making out and then she's talking to uh pistachio and she's like i don't know why he's here pistachio like go away i'm here with my boyfriend rex and then they just immediately go back to making out um while he's like like uh, he's standing there watching them yeah uh, (laughs) yeah yeah so Dana carvey's just the incel like but i did impressions for you big booty cutie (laughs) and then she goes for the alpha chat yeah (laughs) It's just, it's a really weird scene, and he's just, like, sitting there watching them do that, and then eventually he leaves. Um, but, uh, from there, we, 
like go over to like a different alleyway and we see Fabrizio uh, and he's taking the trash out and these goons pull up in like this old kind of like fancy car type of thing and they fucking kidnap him after they have like a little tussle and he's slapping them and stuff. Um, so they take the dad and the mom and uh, Pistachio goes back into the restaurant and they fucking ransacked the place, which I don't, I, we didn't see them go into the restaurant, I guess, but they got the mom. So I guess they did go in there for a little bit. So they knocked everything over, you know, it's all beat to shit. And uh, Pistachio calls the cops <laughs> and uh, he's like, there's ransackery everywhere, but mama's cannoli is safe. And he puts the cannoli on the phone <laughs> and the cops say, don't call again. And then they hang up on him. But um, he like... <laughs> He goes into one of his, uh, into, like, another weird, like, I don't know if you want to call it, like, a trance where he's, like, fainting. He's like, I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do. And then he fucking falls over and faints. And, uh, from there we have, uh, a mysterious man who shows up to the, uh, to the restaurant. And while he's doing that, the, uh, the exorcist theme is playing. And, uh... That's just like a really on the nose, I guess, reference, if you want to call it that. Um, so, yeah, he comes up to the door and he knocks on it. Turns out it's his grandfather. And, uh, you know, they're kind of talking about how his parents have been kidnapped. And they have a line which is like very much of its time. It's, uh, did you ask Jeeves? And uh, Pistachio says, yes, but no such luck. <laughs> and uh, that's, you know, just a little reference to a search engine that doesn't exist anymore, but um, <laughs> his grandfather then, like, leaves the room and disguises himself as, like, a fat maid, and, uh, you know, Pistachio goes in, and the whole place is clean now from all the ransackery, and uh, at first, the grandpa's like, grandfather no here, and then eventually he's like, it's me, you fucking dumbass, like, I have this fucking latex suit on, and Pistachio's like, oh, shit, this is really cool. Like, you know, um, and then after that, we get, like, the big lore drop of the uh, the Master of Disguise universe about how dude, fucking... deep-ass lore. <laughs> there is, dude. <laughs> we got fucking, uh, we got um, the Renaissance in Europe, and uh, we have, like, a, a guy disguised as a statue preventing a art thief. Um, from there, we have uh, George Washington, who's about to cut down the cherry tree. And uh, the tree is actually a person in a tree outfit. <laughs> and, and he says, no cherry tree for you. And then just fucking, like, lifts himself up and walks away. But, like, this is what I'm talking It's so, like, it's not funny. I don't know why it makes me laugh. <laughs> it's like, it's, like, it's not. <laughs> One, that's, like, it's, it's the problem. Not the problem, but, like, it's delivered so, like deadpan or like so seriously yeah. like like there's no laugh track there's no like like george washington as a kid doesn't laugh he just like drops the axe and that's the end of that um, <laughs> and then we have uh we have abraham lincoln who uh is doing like a campaign speech and he's like a super boring speaker and they're like yeah he wouldn't have been fucking elected if it hadn't been for the disguises and so then <laughs> We have like a replacement Abraham Lincoln who shows up and he's like, Are you ready to party? <laughs> and he fucking like, and uh, let Lincoln want to move it, move it starts playing. Yeah. Bow, yeah. Bow, 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 <laughs> and I, let me just say for like a, a family of Italian lineage that starts in Italy and like they're super Italian, why the fuck are they so involved in American politics, huh? What That's a good question. Well, for and then, I think you had, I think you had mentioned this during the movie. Like they had had like they had said something like, "Oh, like we were the first generation to the Americas or whatever." Yeah, what the fuck? Is and it's like, excuse me, <laughs> like y'all have been the there lore, a long ass time. Like the lore ain't adding up. Yeah, but uh, from there, you know, after that big fucking, I don't know, lore dump, uh, we have his grandpa like giving him the pistachio disguisey like handbook i guess um and it's a big old pop-up book which is pr it's like really impressive honestly for a movie of this scale like a lot of the props honestly like you have that you have the um 
the nest in a box, which we'll get to later. Um, like, the props all look, like, good. Like, they're believable, I guess. Like, it's like, yeah, that could be, you know, like, a fucking old ass. Well, you said it had a budget of $16 million. I mean, that's pretty high. And there's not much, yeah. like, special effects, so. No. Yeah, so I guess it's most of it. It's all fairly practical effects. Yeah. And all of the well, other. The shit when they're taken off their skin was not practical. No, I and think it was. I, I think that they had, what? like. I think they had, like, vague versions of what their heads looked like. Like, you know, kind of like Mission Impossible. Yeah, but, like, where it's when, like you, when you obviously had, like, Jessica Simpson or something. And yeah, then, like, oh, no, yeah. When it's Jessica Simpson, it was, like, there's, like, a clear cut, basically, where it goes. That, even that made when he's, like, it, it. well, I guess they didn't show that coming off. They just, like. Yeah, it they, just immediately they, goes they moved to the it. camera away and moved it back, and it was his grandfather. And they do that for, like, a lot of them. Yeah, you know, yeah. like, it's just, like, convenient camera, you know, shifts, I guess. But, um, he gives him the disguise guidebook, and, uh, it's this pop-up. And at first, Pistachio was like, hey, you're gonna help me fucking save my parents, right? And the grandpa's like, fuck no, I'm not. It's like, you know, open this page and fucking see what it says. And the handbook specifically says that, uh... The, the grandfather cannot assist in the, dis the assistance of, like rescuing his mama and papa from enemies or something like that it's yeah. like weirdly it's like specific. word for word <laughs> <laughs> um and that's just because the fucking grandpa's lazy and he doesn't want to help which it's, it's, i get it the movie makers were lazy they're just like that's why that yeah <laughs> when it's like i wonder if part of it was like okay we have this actor for like a few scenes like we have him for this part and the end and then like as a bubble in that one part and that's it, and so we can't have him <laughs> as the assistant, because, like, I don't know, it would have made more sense to have him be, like, helping him along the way, but, um, from there, he, uh, we get, like, a, uh, I guess, because they want to find the hideout that Pistachio's father had, because his grandpa's like, hey, he probably had a fucking nest where he kept all his disguising shit, and so, uh, they go into the attic, and they use this, like, weird Rube Goldberg machine to, like, open it, which <laughs> the logistics of resetting that up every time is probably really ridiculous, but yeah. it's a movie, so we let it happen, I guess. But um, from there, we go to, like, the big training montage for the movie where we're training Pistachio to be a master of disguise, and it's this whole big goofy thing. Uh, I think, though, the highlight by far of this entire montage is when he's like he goes to like a high school and he's disguised as like a high school girl <laughs> and it's like a fucking yeah. awful disguise like it's just it's dana oh, carvey man. with, with uh wig, with drag. with a wig and uh dana carvey and drag and bad yeah. drag it's just bad very drag. bad drag and this fucking <laughs> high this fat high school kid walks up and gives him a rose <laughs> <laughs> and it seems like that that are just so absurd that like you're just like, okay, that's funny, but not because it's, like, believable. Yeah. You know? Um, yeah, that, there's that whole montage that happens. From there is we go... Is that when they're singing that badass uh, Master of Disguise rap? Or something yeah, with, like, the M-A-S-T-E-R of Disguise. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, they do that. Like, the fucking soundtrack in this movie is good. Like, it... Yeah. it <laughs> uh, and even, like, the, uh, like, the licensed songs that they have are good, but, um... From there we go to... Devlin Bowman's Lair, who's the uh, the villain who's kidnapped Pistachio's father, who is played by uh, well, what's the actor's name? Brett Brett Spider. Yeah, who uh, is from uh, Star Trek: uh, The Next, Next Generation. Generation. Yeah, he plays uh, Data, and that, and it's just a, a, like a, it's weird because as a kid, I didn't watch any of the next generation so like i didn't know that but as an adult you see that and you're like holy shit like what happened to your career dude like i just imagine he was so desperate to get away from playing that like emotionless android <laughs> that he was like give me a roll i don't fucking care <laughs> i fart okay whatever <laughs> yeah but um uh you know from there we're at his little lair and uh he's holding fabrizio's wife hostage so that he can force him to become, like, a master of disguise again and seal all of the, like, world's greatest treasures. So, at this point, we get our first of a lot of laughing fart jokes 
that have been mentioned previously. Uh, right. Basically, he does like his villain laugh. He's like, ah, 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 and then he farts, and it's and like, it's oh, like stays man. on him for an extra few seconds, <laughs> and it's just uncomfortable. Everybody's yeah, just like looking around. Yeah, and it's just like it's, it well, like when it's, will this end? It's yeah. never <laughs> funny, but like, I don't know. It, it's it's <sighs> just it's weird. It, like it's it a weird. So just, fucking yeah. terrible. Like no other movie has done that. It's terrible. It's a no, horrible like no. Idea. Okay, okay. I don't agree with that. No, like kind of it, funny. okay. Like it's not that people have done a fart joke before, but like I think to uh, Guardians of the Galaxy two with the whole like, is it ripe yet? Joke where they have that fucking fruit. That's um, kind of stupid. Yeah, and it's like it. I, I don't know. Like the, it's it's of a similar vein where it's like okay it's it's not funny then and it's it's not gonna be uh, <laughs> yeah. uh back at the attic though we uh have pistachio's grandfather teaching him about energico which is this like mystical thing that's basically just the force that binds all of the disguises past and present together and it gives them the ability to basically like briefly meditate and then become another person it's, like literally it's the avatar state yeah become another person <laughs> yeah so they they say the mantra become another person become another per and they just say that over and over until they become a fucking caricature of an indian person that is really really <laughs> it's uh, very racist <laughs> it hasn't it aged is. well uh so yeah he's at first he's doing he like like justin trudeau yeah, <laughs> yeah. Jeez. Oh my god. <laughs> so he, he's doing that really, really unfortunate impression of an Indian person, uh, and like with they have this, face on. yeah, with brown face on, no less. Um, and they have a snake in a fucking basket, and uh, you know, at first he's doing like the thing with the recorder, and it sounds really shitty. But then after he becomes this Indian prince or whatever he does uh, a saxophone solo on the recorder yeah he, it's, he, kenny he, g. it's uh kenny g yeah he um, uh he put well i mean people probably know that saxophone thing just because it's used in like memes and stuff but um uh he plays that fucking saxophone thing and sues the snake um and after that we have the i guess self-defense training if you want to call it that um and there's this like fighting dummy thing that they have and at this point uh the grandpa's like yeah the disguises never use an open fist to fight since that's degrading we just use slaps and it's like i don't know how that's any less degrading but um he starts training with the uh the slapping dummy and the slapping dummy beats the shit out of him uh and it just kind of ends there um from there though we have our first I guess heist if you want to call it that it's not really a heist it's more just like Fabrizio disguises himself as Michael Johnson who I guess at the time was the fastest man alive and he uh convinces these museum guards to let him take the declaration of independence and of course in the getaway car we see that it's Devlin Bowman and Fabrizio and he's just disguised himself as Michael Johnson and we get our second laughing fart joke where he's, you know, they're driving away and he does the, ah, 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 pfft, and that's it. And, and it's just as funny as the first time. <laughs> <laughs> um, from there, though, we have uh, Grandpa and Pistachio. They're checking out this lady with, like, a huge ass. At Well, I mean, you think it's a lady. <laughs> for, you see this person walking uh, their dogs with, like, this fat ass. And they're like, that could be a good wife for you. And then the person turns around and it's this fucking dude with like a beard, like this fat <laughs> dude. And they, uh, beautiful. <laughs> and they're like, they had been eating ice cream up until that point and they fucking stick their, uh, ice cream cones in their mouth. But, um, it's just an innuendo, I believe. Is it? <laughs> no, no. <laughs> uh, no, I think it was supposed to just be shock. Uh, yeah sure shock at how thick that shock can was. suck yeah, that's right <laughs> but uh from there though like uh the grandpa tells pistachio that like according to the guidebook they need an assistant i guess to help him uh along the way and basically do all of the work for him but um 
they play a like another montage where they're doing all these interviews while the uh the song whip it plays and uh all of the applicants are fucking like they're old or they're you know ugly or they're like a dude and it's very clear that there's like a weird sexist criteria going on <laughs> yeah. here um you know so they're they're like denying everybody da 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 and then um fucking the uh the kid from earlier um barney shows up and uh he's like hey like i'm here you know or whatever okay. yeah he he trips and he does the whole i'm okay thing and uh the grandpa goes to the door and he's like hey pistachio you gotta come out here there's a talking baby and pistachio's like oh shit dude i want to I wanna... see the talking baby boy <laughs> <laughs> he goes out there and he's like hey it's barney baker and uh his fucking mom is there to interview for this position and she is fucking fine as shit like oh my god um so she goes in there hey, look it's kind of clear that they're trying to make her look like Jennifer Aniston. It seems yeah. to me like from Friends, who is like the hot girl. So no, I, there you I, go. I see that. She ain't yeah. got no booty though. Yeah, she. I, don't that, know. Well, that's, I feel like she, she's got a booty. She's got enough of one. Just not to the disguisey standard. She got yeah. white girl booty. <laughs> the pog ass. <laughs> <laughs> so she uh she goes in for the interview and they ask her for her measurements because they need it for a uniform allegedly and uh she gives her measurements and uh she got a real tiny butt by their standards and they are making fun of her basically to her face and she's like you know i fucking can hear you right like this is really degrading. And then they start speaking in Italian and they just continue to talk about how small her ass is. It's but, not um, fucking Italian. It's like gibberish. I mean, yeah, <laughs> but it, it's Italian in air quotes, you know? Yeah. It was a Spinoza. I wish I spoke <laughs> Italian so I could know that it was what the fuck was happening. Because it was not. They were saying like Gesundheit and... and well, no, they say uh, that at the end because uh, like they put um like subtitles over them as they're yeah. speaking italian and then when she's talking there's no subtitles until she says gesundheit and then there's subtitles saying bless you so it's like they're they were trying to do a little joke there and it doesn't doesn't really work but um uh they hire her because they pay enough and she's hot enough that they're like okay we'll hire you i guess um, and she's like, hey, it's got, you know, it pays $440 a week and it's got dental and da da da. Um, so then uh, after that, we have Grandpa giving Pistachio the nest in a box and the disguisey ball of knowledge, which is basically a like a Jedi holocron type of thing. And it'll help him whenever he's in dire need. Um, and then he basically just fucks off because I guess they didn't pay him enough to be in more than like three scenes in this movie. But um, after that, we have a uh, Pistachio and Jennifer beginning their search, and uh, they start off in the alleyway where his father was taken, and uh, she finds pretty much immediately a cigar on the uh, on the ground. Um, and she's like, hey, I recognize the fucking label on the cigar. It's a actual, like, handmade cigar from the Turtle Club. And fucking Pistachio, he's, like, digging around in the garbage can behind the restaurant. In the dumpster, yeah. Yeah, he's in the dumpster. <laughs> and uh, he's like, oh, that's stupid. Like, don't even worry about that. You know, like, that's just, you know, that's garbage. And then, like, a second later... that with your tiny woman brain, stupid. And then immediately uh, after that, <laughs> he's like, do you remember that thing you said about the person you dated at the Turtle Club? And she's like, yeah, I just said that like two seconds ago. <laughs> and um, yeah, they basically are like, okay, we're going to fucking go there and investigate it. And from here, we have like the scene that was in all the trailers and uh, like all the ads, you know, like it's on the back of the box. Uh, it's them going to the Turtle Club, and we have Pistachio disguised as a fucking terrifying, like, turtle man. Um, he, like, puts a bald cap on, and he has this big turtle costume on. And basically, the only reason they get in is because Jennifer 
uh, Sweet Talks, the bouncer, um, she's like, oh, this is my brother. He's fucking dreamed of coming here since he was a little kid. Like, just let us in, please. He's, he's on the spectrum. <laughs> yeah, basically. So, um, they, they, he lets them in and they go to the club cigar maker and they're like, oh yeah, you know, the, this belongs to the collection of Devlin Bowman. And, um, uh, they won't give him, or they, he's not going to give them any more information beyond that. He's like, I can't give you his address or his phone number. So it's a dead end for the moment. Um, and then after that, as they're leaving, we get perhaps the weirdest thing ever put <laughs> to screen. <laughs> and that's, uh, they're walking out and like these schmoozy, like, I don't know, middle-aged guys are like hitting on Jennifer and they're like, Hey, can we get you a drink baby and some yeah, pond some, water for yeah, your friend? Yuppies. Uh, yeah, so they, they do that whole thing, and then, uh, Pistachio, like, does this weird thing where he, like, goes into his turtle shell, and he's like, what if some harm came to you? Some horrible, horrible turtle harm. And then he, like, lowers his head into the fucking shell, and- Scarlet! Yeah. Uh, your ass. Oh my god, and he, he rips he, his so, nose off. Yeah, so like, they, the guy, the yuppie is like, where'd he go? And he like, looks into the, the base of the shell, and then fucking Pistachio drops out from the, like, the top of it, and he bites this fucking guy's nose off, but it's not like bloody, it's just like flat, kind of like, uh, like Voldemort in uh harry no, potter doesn't even have nostrils like it's just like skin which is yeah like, like, which is terrifying yeah so he he does that and the guy looks fucking horrified he's like what in the fuck and then pistachio just spits it back onto him and it like reattaches and then he just spins on the floor and yeah, that's the like, end of the scene dances on the floor in the turtle like costume transition right yeah and, um, and i I think you're giving Pistachio too much credit on uh, what he's actually doing in this investigation because it's literally just his assistant. And he's like, hmm. And then he's like not helping at all in the investigation. He just puts on a turtle costume and they're like, the fuck? And yeah. he does everything. And that's a very that's just what happens throughout this entire movie. Yeah. It's just his assistant does all the work. <laughs> yeah. But uh, another, I guess, bit of trivia with the turtle club scene in particular is it was filmed on uh september 11th 2001 and uh oh, as they were as they were filming it they got word of you know what had happened and uh they had like a moment of silence for what had happened so that's like a a more serious um, and then he went turtle what the fuck Was yeah it in the he's middle like of the scene oh i don't know about that but like it's just like i don't know like that that probably happened at a lot of like movies that got filmed around that time but um oh, damn yeah, uh, that was, like, one of the few bits of trivia that wasn't about them, like, making a really shitty movie. But um, after yeah. that, uh, Pistachio drops off Jennifer at his place. He drives this little scooter around, um, and she's not really thrilled about his weird disguise that he had. Um, she's like, that was just, like, really fucking, like, bizarre. Like, I don't even know what to say about that. And uh, she goes into her apartment... And he's saying, like, all these really creepy, like, things. Like, he's like, good night, my love cake. And he's like, good night, future mother of my babies. And it's like, She's yikes. like, ah, you're so funny and charming, pistachio. And it's like, that is not, no. <laughs> that is not how that would play out. <laughs> um, so, yeah, that scene just basically ends. You know, it's clear that he has a thing for her and she may have a thing for him. I don't know, but... um. From there, we have uh, Fabrizio doing another heist. He's now disguised as, uh, I guess, former governor Jesse Ventura, who uh, convinces the guards to let him take the Liberty Bell, which he just, like, walks off with in two hands. Um, and he gives them, <laughs> like, I guess, uh, like, basically G.I. Joes of himself, and he's like, just remember, those aren't dolls, they're action figures. And then he walks off, and Devlin Bowman's like, hell yeah, dude. And he does his laugh again and farts, obviously, but... um, Classic. Yeah, the classic. Um, from there, we're introduced to uh, Jennifer's boyfriend, who is uh, Trent, 
and uh you know earlier on you know it was kind of implied that she was like single but then when he dropped her off she's like oh i got a boyfriend and he's like oh a boyfriend you know the the classic uh i guess whenever you meet people and that's that's how that works you know um see so yeah, we're introduced to trent and uh he's a fucking chad and he's wearing this like tight blue sweater and uh pistachio is trying to get with jennifer obviously but um trent is like a big douche and he really doesn't like barney like he's like fuck that kid he's a fucking sack of shit yeah, i don't I know why you're guys. Yeah, he's like he i hope he really sounded like harlan at the beginning of this podcast yeah basically <laughs> and uh you know he's he's got this whole thing where he's like i fucking like why are you teaching him to be nice fuck that kid yeah. um see they they do that whole thing and then after jennifer comes back he starts to act nice towards uh barney and he's like oh just keep trying you'll do great and then jennifer's like he's so good with kids and it's like <laughs> oh god um and so they have this like weird thing where like trent and pistachio almost fight uh but then fucking trent just grabs his hand mid slap and is like nah bitch we ain't doing that um from there though we go back to the attic and uh jennifer is doing some research on this Devlin Bowman guy, and she finds him on classmates.com, and it's got, like, his, uh, like, his high school graduation photo, as well as his high school quote, and I guess what he wanted to do after he graduated, and he's like, my goal is to fucking take the world's greatest treasures and sell them in a black market thing, (laughs) (laughs) and it's like, it's just so bizarre and out there that it's like kind of funny where you're like okay that's all right that's a decent i guess joke but um they decide they're gonna check out this memorabilia fair because they think devlin bowman will be there for some reason uh so they go to this fair and of course devlin bowman is there and we have a uh, pistachio who is now disguised as a old woman named gammy num nums and at first he's like coming on to Devlin Bowman <laughs> and it's just like really awkward but then uh, Devlin Bowman starts like flirting with uh, Jennifer and he invites her to this party that he's gonna have and again that just goes back into the idea that the only one who's doing anything in this movie is fucking Jennifer um, so from there we go to like this weird I guess side scene where it's like it's Jennifer at a park with Pistachio, and she's like, nothing in the job description said anything about dating weird old guys. And uh, then Pistachio fucking opens up the book, and there's literally a page that says... <laughs> oh my gosh. Uh, that says fucking level 1.5 assistance to a master of disguise may be required to date weird old guys. And it's like, yikes, I get that this was like before like me too Ladies, and stuff like if that that's in your job description don't take the job yeah, yeah don't do it yeah like that's like that's if you're uh <laughs> that's if you're harvey weinstein's right assistant it's exactly. like exactly yeah um but from there we go to uh the party and it's this big old mansion and they have all these like dancers and stuff um and uh she's there to get the information while pistachio basically distracts Devlin Bowman and uh, Pistachio is now disguised as basically Tony Montana. <laughs> he's Al Pacino. Yeah, well, yeah, he's he's Al Pacino, um, and he's you know he's schmoozing at the party to distract Devlin Bowman, and he has this weird thing with a uh, like a shrunken head, and he's like, "This is the Count of Papadopoulos," and the uh, Devlin Bowman's like, "Hey, I'll buy that," and he's like, "No, nah, I can't sell it to you, dude." Um, so Jennifer is like sneaking around the mansion, and she finds this like drawer with a bunch of pictures of celebrities and for some reason that's enough information for her to determine that uh pistachio's dad is being used as a uh a master of disguise to steal stuff which i don't know it's just weird because it's pictures of celebrities that we haven't seen in the movie like there's a there's robin williams there's um uh what the fuck is her name um i can't uh, uh whoopi goldberg 
Um, yeah. You know, like, and none of those are people who are in the movie. They were just like, we paid for their picture, basically, <laughs> <laughs> for their likeness in that scene. Um, so I don't really know why that's, like, enough info for her to figure that out. But um, at that point, uh, Bowman starts to get pissed at Pistachio because he's, like, doing this dancing and stuff. And he's like, fucking guards, get this guy out of here. He's ruining my party! Uh, which I don't really know how he's doing that because he's just doing some dancing. But, um... Oh, and I also yeah, forgot... Al Pacino would make the party. How does nobody recognize oh, yeah. him? Nobody yeah. even brings it up. They're just uh, like, who are you supposed to be? Really? He's uh, fucking Al Pacino. They should have been like, oh well, my we, god, we Mr. Get the... Al Pacino, what are you doing at my party break dancing uh, with a shrunken head? But no, everyone's just like, what a weirdo. Well, we, and we get the uh, the great line with the waiter who has like the hors d'oeuvres on the plate, and uh, fucking pistachio is like, you got a little wiener and some tiny nuts, and the yeah. fucking waiter is like, what the fuck are you talking about? And he's Hilarious. like, <laughs> he's like, I knew just by looking at you that you would have a little wiener and some tiny nuts, and he's got like a little cocktail wiener and some like peanuts on the fucking tray and uh then he just walks off but um after that like he you know pistachio can tell the guards are coming for him so he leaves and uh he escapes and he disguises himself as a fisherman on a small boat in a nearby <laughs> pond on the like property i guess and uh this fisherman is basically like a reference to jaws and uh it's like I guess the one of the fishermen on the boat in that movie. And he was like, "Yeah, sharks go into water. The kids go into water. <laughs> Ever Dude, seen a shark's like eyes? A like a doll's eyes. <laughs> kind of like doll's eyes. Is that, I think that's when our belly laughed. Uh, yeah, that was I, that I was the, unashamedly. Funny. I will unashamedly say that was hilarious. Yeah. So he uh he does that he does that whole shtick and he's like, 29 kids go into water." <laughs> 22 come out the ice cream man he takes the rest <laughs> <laughs> and so then like the goons are like are you on fucking drugs like <laughs> yeah. what's wrong with you there's there, there's no shark in this water and uh, at that point this we is see a bathtub. <laughs> <laughs> basically and uh, at the, we see a bit of the uh pistachio's arm as the fisherman and he still has the arm hair from his uh tony montana disguise and uh the guards catch wind of this and they're like fucking show us your arm dude and he's like oh shit they're on to me and he starts rowing away and he rows away and uh we get like this really abrupt jump cut to like the guards running into this like field of cows and one of them steps in like a thing of cow shit <sighs> and they're like okay there's no one here you know let's fucking move on and then, what do you know? It's fucking Pistachio Disguisey, disguised as a, a fucking... As, a couch, pot. as a cow patty. Yeah, as a cow patty. <laughs> <laughs> and from there, we get a, uh, a Scooby-Doo chase scene where the goons are like, oh shit, he's there! Like, let's fucking chase him! And he's chasing them through the city, or like, they're chasing him, rather, through the city. And, uh, you know, he's doing the whole thing with, like, a newspaper where he, like, is still disguised as the grass and the cow shit. And he has a newspaper in front of his face, and they run past him, and he pulls it down and, like, looks around. I, I thought it was a funny scene. But from there, uh, we go back to the mansion, and Pistachio is trying a different tactic. And he's, dis he's like, disguised as a, uh, a German guy now. And uh, he introduces himself. He's like, oh, I'm Constable Mueller from the German Tax Authority. And I'm here for Jennifer Baker because she owes a lot of money. Dear. And he does that whole thing. And uh, That was a really good impression of Dana Carvey's really bad impression of a German. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All I'm saying is they should have called me when I was That's fucking exactly seven years old. Like. Went, I was only seven, but... Uh, <laughs> It's not how fucking German people talk. <laughs> Wait, not all Germans are like oddly, you know, metrosexual and go. <laughs> <laughs> um, but he very clearly can tell that the guards are not into that disguise, and so he changes tactics again and goes for like a more, I don't know, not not James Bond, but like I don't know, weird British spy Lord, thing. Lord Sandwich. 
Yeah, so, something like that. But um, he goes in there as a British spy. He's like, oh, yes, Jennifer Baker here with regards to Operation Minty Hippo. And Devlin Bowman's like, why are we, like, letting this fly? Like, this is, <laughs> like, I, I don't understand this. And so um, they fucking, like, Pistachio and Jennifer leave. And then Devlin is like, follow them after some kind of angsty spy music plays. Um, and so after that, we uh, head to a bar where uh, basically Pistachio and uh, Jennifer are like, hey, like, here's the plan that we basically revealed in the previous scene, but we needed to tell Pistachio about it. Um, and so from there, we see Trent, who is Jennifer's boyfriend, with Sophia, the fat ass girl from earlier, and they're at at the bar together, and it's like, oh shit, dude. Um, so Trent is cheating on Jennifer, and uh, Pistachio accidentally fucking uh, spills his drink on Trent, and he's like, my tight blue sweater. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, from there, you know, we find out that he's cheating on Jennifer, and. Uh, you know, she's obviously not very happy about that. And at this point, Pistachio's like, no, I gotta fucking fight for her honor, dude. And he fucking does, like, a slap fight with her. Or w with, uh, with not him. with her, yeah, with Trent. And, uh, he beats the shit out of him to the point that he fucking faints. And, uh, the whole bar is watching as they're doing this fight. And at the end of it, uh, fucking Sophia is like, oh, I'm so into you now. Absolutely like, soaked. Yeah. Boom, she is wet. She's <laughs> sliding <laughs> off chair. Mm. <laughs> so yeah, she's super into him now. She but must he... have been using water balloons for her fake butt, because damn. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> From there though, Pistachio's like, nah ho, I ain't into you anymore. Like I'm into Jennifer now. Goodbye. And he pushes her to the ground. <laughs> and it's like really kinda like, ugh, like that's that's Hell a little yeah. much. Be yeah. gone, thought. <laughs> <laughs> Basically, but um, from there, we get another heist scene. It's Fabrizio disguised as Jessica Simpson. And uh, she, in quotes, convinces the guards to let them take the Apollo lunar landing module. And we get another laughing fart joke, obviously, um, as they drive off. But uh, from there, we have Jennifer telling Pistachio that she basically has like a newfound respect for him after he fought for her honor i guess and uh you know she's like i know that now you'll be able to find your fucking mama and your papa and they kiss after another weird uncomfortable like romance scene um and he's like my first kiss and it's just <laughs> really fucking weird <laughs> but uh from there like, he drops her off at uh, her apartment, and he goes back home, and we see Devlin Bowman's goons go in to kidnap Jennifer, and uh, Bowman is now beginning his final plan, I guess, which we don't really know what it is just yet, but we'll get there. Um, and we have Pistachio, who, I guess, finds out somehow that Jennifer has been kidnapped. I don't know if maybe Barney had called him, but um, he uses the the ball of knowledge to consult his grandpa and he's like what the fuck do i do dude like i don't none of this was planned for um and so then barney shows up on this roof of a completely different apartment uh and is like my mom's gone you need to help me pistachio ba -ba -ba. and uh he's like i got a plan let me whisper it in your ear and uh you know the grandpa is like don't fucking listen to this kid. He's a fucking baby. Like, what are you talking <laughs> about? Um, and so, uh, Pesesh is like, nah, fam, we should listen to him. He might have a good idea sort of thing. And so he's like, okay, but just do it real quietly. Um, and so he tells him that, and we get the, uh, I, we haven't really mentioned it up until this point, but one of the other, I guess, running jokes in quotes is, uh, he's like, that idea is so crazy, so crazy. It just... <laughs> might work and it like zooms in on the grandpa um so from there we go to the uh like i guess the the big party i guess which is the uh the black mark ebay auction where they're gonna sell all the items that they've been stealing throughout the movie uh devlin bowman that is and we have this guy who's like a black mark ebay representative 
and he's talking to him about where he got all the stuff. He's like, you know, I, you've gotten all the stuff. I, I am curious. And he's like, Fabrizio Disguise is how I've done all this. And he's like, ah, so it is the Master of Disguise. And he's like, do you want to see him? And he shows him. And at first the guy's like, oh, you're going to auction him off. And he's like, no, even better. I'm going to fucking glue a mask of myself to him and then push him off a cliff so people think I'm dead. Genius. <laughs> Never mind the fact that they could find out easily if they, like, cremated the body. Like, there'd be, like, rubber bits, and they'd be like, why is that there? I don't know. Um, <laughs> but, uh, you know, he's like, oh, it's the perfect crime. And uh, from there, we see a, uh, like, a, a cherry pie get wheeled into this party. And the chef is like, I don't even remember cherry pie being on the menu. And he just walks off. Despite the fact that the enormous fucking, uh, I guess, rolling tray that they have is big enough to hold a human and right. probably weighed as much as a human as he pushed it. I, but, really uh, wanted, I really wanted them to be like, does anybody want pie? Why, yes, I'd love some. And they take their fucking chef's knife and drive it into the middle of the uh, pie. <laughs> uh, but oh, in, no. Instead of that, it's like, this pie tastes really good. It's a little crunchy, though. <laughs> um, but uh instead of that happening uh you know they fucking drop the pie off in like a little corner of the party and uh who is it but fucking pistachio disguisey in a pie suit and uh he starts stealthing his it's way not around even a pie suit it's like there's the pie and he's underneath in the cart and he comes out from on top of the pie covered in like he's in a filling suit it's like cherries and goop yeah, yeah. <laughs> so so he, he's in this, I guess, stealth suit, in quotes, and uh, he, you know, starts, like, fighting the guards off because they immediately notice him because he's not very incognito. But uh, he does this weird thing where he, like, shoots cherries at them like a machine gun. and uh, Out of his mouth. Out of his mouth, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and fucking <laughs> knocks a bunch of them out. <laughs> um, so he does that, and then... After that, we go to, like, the main black market uh, auction area, and all the goons are showing up, and they're like, fucking, you know, his son is, Pistachio is here, we gotta find him, and uh, he's like, by the way, uh, Devlin is like, by the way, like, goon number three, your wife called, you know, and said that you should call her back soon, and the goon is like, okay, thank you, and uh, then Devlin is like, Oh, you're not married, dude. And he's like, how the fuck did you know? Because it turns out it's Pistachio disguised as the goon. Um, and so we get that face reveal, and he's like, how did you know it was me? And he's still got the cherry pie shoes on. Because, uh, <laughs> you know, that's just funny, I guess. But um, Yeah, it's, yeah, exactly. it's a Lamau moment. But um, after that, uh, we have, like, you know, that big reveal in quotes. And... Uh, you know, we have um, basically a big ninja fight thing that happens. Like, it's like, like the crazy eighty-eight fights, like gearing up, like a bunch of fucking ninjas just come down. Yeah, yeah, and so we have that. We have that fight while all of these uh, people are watching the auction on their IMAX from two thousand. So they're like those big, uh, you know, bulky CRT IMAX sort of thing. But um, one of them is. Uh, was it Keenan? Keenan something from, uh, I think he was on uh, Saturday Night Live and he was on the, uh, the Keenan and Kel show on Nickelodeon back in the day, but, um, I have no idea. Ah, I see. Only 90s kids will remember, but, uh, <laughs> I think it's Keenan Thompson. I think you're right, yeah, but, um, it's, it's one of those two, uh, he's there watching it and then there's other weird, sort of regrettable impressions of, like, I don't know, people in uh, the Himalayas, and they're like, oh, like they're doing like a really racist Asian impression as they're watching the fights. Um, so Pistachio is able to beat the ninjas, um, 
And uh, at this point... He doesn't really fight any of them, though. Let's be clear. Like, he slaps two of them, and then they're like, ah! And he's doing, like, like, ninja poses after that, but they just kind of are like, oh, shit, we're scared, and they run off. And Devlin Bowman is like, I'll give you a raise if you stay! And they all just run away. Um, And from here, we see Devlin Bowman's like, well, bitch, I got your fucking mom, and, you know, being held hostage still. And he shows the little screen where they've you know, throughout the movie, they've been showing her, like, with these goons who basically are there to make sure uh, Fabrizio does does uh, a Devlin's bidding. And uh, at this point, I don't know why, but the mom realizes that there have been goons this whole time and fucking throws the goon over her head or something or like <laughs> well she's in, so she's in a fake kitchen and it's like oh if you want your mama to be happy and she's just like cooking and cutting carrots to be like whoo no like, you better not fucking do anything because there's goons in the fucking sink and soap bubbles that are gonna strangle her to death like, yeah i don't fucking know but that's what it like she, she realizes that there's people in her kitchen which i guess yeah, no duh. more caramel corn for me yeah well, and yeah, 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 they, like and, they've, yeah. and they've been using this caramel corn laced with drugs i guess right. to fucking convince her that it's her house dude i want some and so then she uh she realizes she's being held hostage and she knocks out the guard and then she looks into the camera and says, no more caramel corn for me. And then fucking that's the end of that scene. And I I don't think we see her for the rest of the movie. Um, but uh, from there, we uh, we have, I guess, uh, Devlin's ace in the hole, which is that he's going to glue the mask to Pistachio's father's face and brainwash him as well into thinking that he actually is Devlin Bowman. And so, uh, you know, as he's finishing the uh, the final touches on that mask, he's running away and farting and laughing at the same time. And it's just over and over and over again. And, like, we finally get a thing where he, like, is at the door and it doesn't fart at first. And he, then he's, like, looking and he's like, oh, okay. And then he fucking farts and he looks so defeated. Like, he's just like... <laughs> He's like, fucking Christ, like, I can't ever just fucking have a, an evil laugh. And so then he leaves, and uh, we get the big, I guess, conclusion to the movie where it's Pistachio versus Fabrizio, who is uh, brainwashed to be Devlin. And, uh, you know, they do this whole thing where they climb the, uh, the lunar lander, and Pistachio's like, I know how I can fucking bring him back to his senses. I'll put the underwear on my head again. And he fucking pulls his underwear out without taking his pants off, mind you, which, that's impressive. But uh, he pulls the underwear and he puts it on his head. And that is the thing that brings Fabrizio back to uh, reality, I guess. And uh, he does this whole thing where he, like, shakes the mask of Devlin off of his face and it's really weird because, like, they said it was glued to his head. His face absorbs the mask. It's weird, but yeah. he, like, shakes it off and, like, takes off the blue contact lenses. And he's like, it's me again, my son. I love you. And they fucking have their little father-son moments or whatever. And uh, it basically just ends there. And we have, like, the grandpa, Pistachio, and Fabrizio, like, walking towards the camera trying to look like badasses while some like ending monologue is playing and they're like oh jennifer and pistachio got married and he got the missus disguised um but from there we get it's not really a post credit sequence it's more like a uh an epilogue if you will yeah um and it's uh grandpa fabrizio and pistachio they go to mexico to track down devlin bowman who still has the Declaration of Independence, and uh, Pistachio is disguised as uh, George W. Bush, <laughs> which is a, it's like a weird, because like uh, Dana Carvey did impressions of uh, George H.W. Bush, and so it's kind of like a meta humor thing where it's like, oh, he's disguised as his son now. Um, so he's disguised as George Bush, and uh, Bowman is like, hey, I want a fucking picture of you with you dude like let's do that and at this point uh you know pistachio basically reveals that it's him and uh then they fucking 
knock his ass into the pool after they save the Declaration of Independence. And, uh, you know, Devlin Bowman sinks to the bottom of the pool. And they're like, oh shit, did we fucking, like, kill him? And then he lets out this fucking enormous death fart, I guess. And this, like, huge bubble comes up out of the water. But, um... It's never revealed if he actually died or not. I think that was how, like, Goldeneye ended, right? James Bond knocks Goldfinger in there or something. Goldeneye? Then there's a big big death fart. I think that's a classic movie ending. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, that is, it's, it's not quite that, but... Uh... Fucking useless trope. <laughs> <laughs> From there, though, we, uh, you know, we go to the credits in, in, in you know, we actually go to the credits. In uh, the greatest post prost credits ever like the credits mm. are incredible i think well they're they're like fun like it's very clear yeah, that they were having perfect. fun um you know it's like them dancing around and their different disguises and stuff that they had along the way but we have our post credit scene the first of several um and it's uh devil and bowman has like an army of like fembots from uh fucking austin powers and they're just really hot chicks and uh, Pistachio is able to resist them. With, and... No, they're hot chicks with fat, fat, badongadong butts. Yeah, oh, I mean, it's, it's, uh, at this dogs. point, it's, like, established that that's probably the case <laughs> with women in this movie. But um, he's able to resist them. And uh, that's basically, like, the end of that. Like, like, it's not really a fight. He's just like, my love for Jennifer is bigger than your behind. And then that's it. Um, and then we have another scene with, uh, what a simp. <laughs> basically, but, um, we have another scene with that, uh, black Mark eBay guy who, uh, is talking to Devlin Bowman about Fabrizio disguising. And he's like, Hey, can you disguise yourself as Barbara Streisand? And, uh, James Brolin, the actor who played Fabrizio disguise, is actually married to Barbara Streisand, which is... Just kind of a weird little joke, I guess. But um, from there, we get the final post credit scene, which is uh, Pistachio kind of messing with the uh, slapping dummy from earlier in the movie. And he, like, opens the back of it. <laughs> and a fucking midget comes out of it. A midget who looks like a, like a 1930s strongman with the handlebar mustache, but dressed like Mario. Yeah, from, from Super yeah. Mario Bros. Yeah. yeah, he's dressed as Mario. And he, like... He's Beats like, what the... the hell yeah, he's like, what the fuck is this thing? And he fucking gets chased down the street by this midget. Yeah, but then we have... me, I slap you! Is one of the things he says. <laughs> and that's, like, kind of an iconic line. I remember when oh, I was a kid, it? like, they would say that all the time at my school. Uh, <laughs> you and me, I hit you! Is that what you said when you're wrestling? Yeah. You slap me, I slap you! Yeah, and then I just, like, started slapping them. Yep. <laughs> slapping your balls together. But, yeah, uh... They... <laughs> Jesus Christ. Oh, yeah. oh, my God. Um, but from there, they, uh... <laughs> they, uh, they make up and they become friends after they tussle. And, uh, they do the, I guess... I don't know if you want to call it classic, but they do the thing where they're it's like not classic. It's, it's more of like a 90s it's like a thing. trope. Yeah, it's uh, they they're like, what are you still doing here? You just saw the movie, yeah, you know. They they get out of here. They do a yeah. Ferris Bueller, but it's it's Asperger, Dana Carvey, and <laughs> <Italian. laughs> <laughs> So they uh they do that, and that's the end of the movie. <laughs> and that's that's right. that's that. Yeah. Um. So like, I guess uh. You know, after that, um, is this movie as bad as critics say? Yeah, you know, is this honestly a... after the rereading? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> dude. It's bad. Yeah, I know. It's a bad I movie. No, I, I don't. Okay, you I don't. Shouldn't watch this movie, but it was no. enjoyable at the time when I rewatched it with other people that knew we were gonna wa- watch a piece of shit. <laughs> it was kind of funny. Yeah, it's well, it's like. That, it, like it's not as bad as something like Troll 2 or Iconic, but yeah. it's. I feel like it's kind of as funny. If, especially if you're watching it with somebody who has seen it before. I feel like that really kind of makes the spe- experience better yeah. and everything. But if 
I certainly would not watch this alone. If you don't have a person next to you that you can just like look at and be like, "What the fuck?" It's not funny. It's not. <laughs> yeah. Funny. Yeah. Well, okay. Yeah, I'll I'll agree on that. I do not think it's a one percent, but. It's not know. a good movie. It's not like like it deserved all the the hate it got. You know, to, uh, to watch to watch this movie, you must have a friend, and that's kind of a big <laughs> like yeah. just like detraction. I don't know. I don't. Eh, I eh, do. Yeah. Eh. I because like it's it's more game, like it's all more the way or a way out. Like got no people playing it because it required a friend <laughs> nobody's gonna watch this because all i'm saying is like it's it it's does. at least more competently made than something like the room like the room i would not ever watch on my own no like you know but this i don't know the argument could be made if you were drunk and sad that you were like okay i'll watch it on my own but um you know obviously it's still like y'all said just be sad that you have such bad taste if you need to watch <laughs> it on your own i mean also this the movie nostalgia had 10 million more dollars <laughs> like a 10 million more dollar budget than the room so but i mean it's also like i don't know it's more competently made than because it had dana carvey as the director <laughs> like adam of sandler. course adam sandler knows how to make retarded movies yeah of like, course he's got it down to his side again I'm just going off of the thing that, like, you know, you don't. Zero <laughs> percent. <laughs> nah, fam, it's like a, it's like a, a nine or ten Fine. percent. Two point five. Take it or leave it. <laughs> That's if better I had, than one. If I had Harlan as a child, and my child constantly watched Master of Disguise. I would want to shoot myself. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Jesus. <laughs> I guess my family just had really poor taste in movies because my dad, uh, like I was talking to him about how he watched this, and he was like, I love that movie. Oh, oh my God. And he, he, was like, <laughs> he was quoting it and stuff, and I was like, yeah, it is really quotable, but <laughs> it's not a good movie. Um, <laughs> oh, man. Uh, so, yeah, I guess, you know, it, it's a bad movie. Let's let's just be clear. Yeah, it's 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 not good, but um. But it's also a short movie, which was it's nice. yeah, it's only an hour and twenty minutes, which at this point we're basically at the same length as the movie itself for the review. But uh, um, do you all think it was like irresponsible for Happy Madison to greenlight a movie like this? Um, oh, this is their shit. absolutely not. This is the shit they do. This isn't even yeah. the worst movie they've done. Yeah, and that's like true. Yeah. yeah, yeah. When well, it's like, I'd be curious to see. Of their, like, movies that they've done, like... Because Jack and Jill, that's another one that, like, people really fucking don't like. Pixels. Eh, yeah, but that's, like, I don't know. I, that That's... I, I don't think that... Pixels that's... was really bad. <laughs> yeah. But, like, I don't know. Would that have a lower score? It's like, I don't know. We would have to... Yeah. It's the ridiculous... It six or wasn't something. funny. But, like... Netflix, uh, but this one is... This one is held as, like, the low standard... I guess, and it's like, would y'all say that that's worse than this? You know? No, I, well, I, I think so, that this was better than. Um, I'll say this. Pixel. I haven't seen those, and I refuse to. This is the bottom bar, lowest shit I will watch. Like, okay, I will watch. I came to your house and I watched <laughs> this. If you <laughs> asked me to watch Jack and Jill or something, I don't think I don't think I could do it. I so I, I saw Jack and Jill in theaters. Oh my god. <laughs> Why? Cuz I I went to go see it with my dad and like oh my god, dude. <laughs> I don't I don't I don't even have words. Right. To describe. <laughs> no, like it was really bad and I was fairly young when I saw it, like I don't know, 15. Like that's if not super young. But that's young enough to know, like, holy shit, this is a bad movie. And I thought it was going to be good because I was like, oh, Adam Sandler, I like Billy Madison. <laughs> oh, my <laughs> God, this is awful. If, if Adam Sandler has a universally agreed on worst movie, like, I don't need more than that. You just, I don't need to see it. Yeah. It's going to be, it's going to be the worst shit ever. So is Master of Disguise the worst movie? No, absolutely not. Absolutely Is it the worst not. movie I will watch? Yes. Does that make it the worst movie to me? I don't know. Maybe. I can say this is the movie I watched the whole way through, and it's like horrible. I think that's a great way to sum it up. Honestly, like that. Uh, aside from that, they uh, they had planned on doing an animated sequel series, but Jesus uh, Christ! 
<laughs> that's more of just like a trivia thing like it obviously after it came out and it a didn't make very much money like i, I after advertising it probably didn't make anything and then b uh you know it just got fucking dragged through the coals by critics they were like fuck that we're not doing a fucking animated show for this shit um it totally seems like it would have had it though Oh yeah, well, and it's like of its uh, like when you, you think say of, that I could see it being set up like that. I totally think about the uh, the Napoleon Dynamite animated show. That thing was awful, awful. Like I, I even I'm thinking about like uh, I guess it was the other way around with Inspector Gadget, but like, man, what what was live action that they turned into animated? They've done other stuff for sure. Uh, I'm trying to think, because I'm thinking of the Atlantis TV show. Any kind of movie they turn into a tv show is just fucking awful but i can only think of animated ones yeah but the point is like that's probably the level of quality that we would have gotten so it's probably good that they didn't do that um i guess that really kind of wraps things up uh because we've been going for a while a lot longer than i expected with uh fucking the master of disguise like you literally like said every single thing that happens in that movie (laughs) basically yeah and it's like it's just weird because like uh you don't really think about, um, I don't know, when you have something like Alien, it's like not a lot is happening, but you have a lot to talk about because it's a good movie. And then this, it's like... Oh, I have I have nothing, no fucking ammo to talk about movie making with this one. There's yeah. no theme, there's no, cult, there's no director and direction or anything. It's just like a fucking kid's movie. Yeah. That's not good. Yeah, and that's, <laughs> I, I guess that really sums it up. Uh, Anyone have anything they want to plug before we go? Eventually I will get Twitch going. It's twitch.tv slash lharlito. Check it out. Hell yeah. And uh, at some point, I think Ben and I will do another Let's Play type of thing. Um, aside from that, though, on Hey Ocarina, which I've kind of rebranded how the spelling is. It's just Hey Ocarina with an exclamation point at the end now. Um no five e's or anything like that but oh, just uh, one e wow. it's just one e yeah Revolutionary. Um, <laughs> but uh yeah i've been doing a lot of action figure reviews on there that i think are pretty neat so check that out if y'all want to um that's gonna wrap it up for this episode since we doubled up in theory on reviews this week we're gonna do snyder cut part two at some point before the uh, end of the week um we're actually gonna take a break next week so after that we'll figure out what we want to do from there but we will look forward to y'all joining us for whatever that review is going to be if you enjoyed the podcast or are watching on youtube we'd really appreciate it if you like comment subscribe and hit the bell icon and with that thanks for watching and always remember (laughs) 